So what does it do to English? Many of you will recognize it when we talk about what the features are. And this is an overview of the features. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's some of the major things that you'll see in African-American English. It adds and deletes morphemes. So the possessive S is often deleted, as is zero past tense, the plural forms, and third person singular S. So I ride in my brother car instead of I ride in my brother's car, a girl putting some glass on the table instead of some glasses. And we know it's glasses because she used the word some before she said glass. So deletion of these grammatical morphemes actually is uh, very common in African-American English. It also transforms the main verb and the verb phrase. And so these top two features, deletion of copulent auxiliary, which are forms of the verb to be, and subject verb agreement are the two most common features in African-American English. And if a child is an African-American English speaker, regardless of their socioeconomic status, they will be using these top two. Um, he running fast, he hungry, this a red car, she going home. Those are all very common. And then there's habitual be, which many people um, seem to know and recognize as a feature of dialect. And that is use of the infinitive form be, regardless of the subject. So you can say he be, she be, they be, the dog be, but you never conjugate be. And the thing that's important about this is the habitual nature of it though. So you can't just throw be in anywhere. Um, it's something where it happens repeatedly. And so anytime you see be, you should be able to put at the end of the sentence all the time. So he be getting some ice cream means he be getting some all the time, not just he is getting some. So it has a particular meaning and a particular use. And remember, it's oral language. Remote past Ben, I've been knowing how to swim. I include this one because there are always Southerners in the group. And you know that this is a Southern feature. And it, African-American English historically um, has its roots in the South. Most African-American people in this country have their roots in the South. And when they left the South, they took this dialect with them. So when you find African-American people in Maine or Florida, I grew up in Seattle or in the middle of the country in Texas, you'll find that this dialect is spoken wherever um, African-American people are as a community. And that's how it came to be known as a cultural dialect. But it has its roots in the South um, as we, uh, as African-American people have our roots in the South. I grew up in Seattle, but my parents are from Texas and Arkansas. It also changes pronouns. So the regularized reflexive is one you'll see a lot in kids, his self, she self, they self, um, and then the appositive pronoun, which is one of my favorite ones actually, is uh, the case where the noun and the pronoun both appear together. So my mama, she, my daddy, he, my cousins, they, um, and in uh, mainstream American English, you would use one or the other. It also impacts phonology, which becomes a concern uh, certainly also with reading. So um, the top one people typically tend to recognize, and I've already used it as an example, F for voiceless TH, with and with, V for voice TH, so babe and babing, and T for voiceless TH, wit, instead of with. And then the second one, the D for voiced um, TH in um, the initial position, dis, dat, dem, does, um, is really common. And then the last one, consonant cluster reduction is very, very common. And so this is where, when there is a, a consonant cluster at the end of a word that's two consonants or more, one of them, typically the last one, is, de is uh, deleted. And so in that case, um, what, what you hear is words that sound kind of like a continuous speech stream because the ends of words have no boundaries. The other thing that's interesting about consonant cluster reduction is you see like in the case of the one that's on the screen, when you reduce the D and it goes from cold to cold, um, cold actually is a word in uh, American English. And so you have reduced one word and created something that actually is another word in English. And so one of the things we're interested in is 
when there are a number of these going on in the speech stream, how does it impact comprehension? And we don't think that the kids don't comprehend, but that their reaction time might be impacted while they um, try to discriminate what word it is that's being used in the context in which it's being used. So that's African-American English, and that's what it does to English.